The United States is being handed over to the United Nations. Obama recently announced that he will bypass Congress and seek a United Nations Security Council resolution to outsource the United States nuclear policy to an international body. The Daily Caller reports the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action does not require congressional approval, but likely binds future U.S. government policy towards Iran. Obama's U.S. Attorney General Loretta Lynch wants to federalize the nation's police with the United Nations-backed Strong Cities Network. In 1999, Lynch was appointed by Bill Clinton to head the U.S. Attorney's Office in New York, and by 2002, according to Lynch's bio, she joined Hogan & Hartson LLP, now Hogan Lovells, as a partner in the firm's New York office. While in private practice, Ms. Lynch performed extensive pro bono work for the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, established to prosecute those responsible for human rights violations in the 1994 genocide in that country. Human rights violations, where between 500,000 and 1 million Rwandans were killed by their own countrymen. Bill Clinton later apologized for standing by silently and doing nothing. It is my hope that through this trip in every corner of the world, today and tomorrow, their story will be told. That four years ago in this beautiful, green, lovely land, a clear and conscious decision was made by those then in power that the peoples of this country would not live side by side in peace. During the 90 days that began on April 6th in 1994, Rwanda experienced the most intensive slaughter in this blood-filled century we are about to leave. We talk about Rwanda as a failure of U.S. policy, a failure to intervene, a failure to recognize what was going on, and a failure to take action to stop genocide. But if you look at the Clinton administration's approach to it throughout the entire period, what you really see is that it was actually a success of a policy not to intervene. It wasn't a failure to act. The decision was not to act. And at that, we succeeded greatly. The same company, Hogan Lovells, employed gold star father and recent Trump annoyance, Kazir Khan. Lynch and Khan come from the Clinton Foundation stable of attorneys tied to Saudi Arabia, the Muslim Brotherhood, and a who's who of foreign dictators. Be forewarned, America, the Clintons and any of their lackeys will seek to hijack any and all crises for their own benefit. And with Saudi Arabia reportedly funding 20% of Hillary's campaign, it is vitally important to the aforementioned and other Clinton plants that Sharia law circumvent the U.S. Constitution. I mean, we're talking about a woman who exclusively used a private server to trade our deepest, darkest secrets, knew the thing was hacked, and still used it anyway. And was and getting money. Accurately stated yeah, she was doing it on purpose, it probably right. story- probably to sell them. I mean, I, I think your Secret Service guy, I think you're catching on to what I've been told. Hillary knew it was hacked. This was her plausible deniability to sell secrets right there for money to come back to the foundation. Well, I don't know, but I know the Clinton Foundation, I write this in the book too, is kind of like a shadow government. What they're trying to do with the Clinton Foundation is they're influence peddling. They're trying to get their people into these appointed special positions in the government. They're then selling influence through the Clinton Foundation for people who will then be able to, they'll be able to go back and contact those folks within the government and get things done and expedite them on kind of a governing, uh, you know, HOV lane. So their people get service you don't. Again, if you have any doubt you're being ruled, not governed, just look at the Clinton Foundation and how their friends get expedited service. And this is the ultimate, to the, the ultimate the DMV. discrimination. I mean, against all Americans to have a second class, you know, for the general public and this elite class above the law, it's the essence of tyranny. And with the recent arrest of a D.C. Metro officer assisting ISIS, alarm bells should be ringing as to the scale of the infiltration by a radical jihadist network operating at all levels of our government. John Bound for Infowars.com.